What's the brightest thing in the universe? If you look up to an early night sky, you might see the moon glowing up above, reflecting the brilliant rays of the sun and shining away as the brightest object in the night sky. Perhaps you might also notice a bright star which outshines all the rest. This one isn't like the rest of the stars, though, as it wanders across the heavens as the night progresses. This bright dot of light is in fact not a star at all, but a planet, the planet Venus. And while its brightness is partially due to being completely covered in reflective clouds, this brilliance is even more closely linked with its distance, as it's the closest planet to us. So let's look a bit farther out into the sky. How about the brightest star? Scanning the sky for the brightest star leads us to the whitish-blue star in the constellation Canis Majoris, named Sirius, which translates as scorching in Greek, an apt name for a star with a temperature of 25,000 degrees Kelvin. But at 8.6 light-years away, it's a stone's throw away in terms of astronomical distances. Of all the stars in our galaxy, Sirius is the eighth closest. And while Sirius is a bright star, 25 times as bright as our sun, we could imagine that if it were farther away, it too would fade into the night sky as just another speck in the Milky Way. So how can we distinguish what's truly bright in the universe and what's merely sort of bright but extremely close? To distinguish these two ideas, astronomers use two different terms to describe brightness, apparent magnitude and absolute magnitude. Apparent magnitude refers to the brightness of astronomical objects when viewed from Earth. The Sun, the Moon, Venus, and Sirius are all brightness winners here. But the far more interesting quantity for determining brightness is absolute magnitude, a measure of how bright an object would appear at a standard distance of 10 parsecs. For historical reasons, this scale starts with positive values like 4.83 for our Sun and gets smaller and even negative for more luminous stars. While these measurements are useful for astronomers, the system can be somewhat cumbersome, so we'll use the idea of the sun's luminosity instead to compare brightness. Luminosity is independent of distance because it measures the total energy of light output per unit time, and can be measured in watts, the same as the light bulbs in your house. However, with the sun coming in at 3.8 trillion trillion 100 watt bulbs, astronomers compare stars' luminosity in terms of solar luminosity instead. Under this scale, the Sun has a luminosity of 1, while Sirius, which is 25 times brighter, has a luminosity of 25. Searching the Milky Way now for the most luminous star leads us to Eta Carina, an unusual star system enveloped in a nebula It has varied in brightness for the past few hundred years, reaching a peak in the mid-1800s when the system ejected a large amount of material into space as it absorbed one of the stars in its system. It has dimmed considerably since then, but is still the most luminous observed star in the Milky Way, coming in at 5 million times as bright as the Sun. As bright as Eta Carina is, it is also at the very end of its stellar lifespan. In the near future, it will briefly become much more luminous, as it explodes in one of the brightest phenomena in the universe, a supernova. Supernovae occur when a star collapses because it can no longer support the massive weight of its outer layers, causing it to generate an enormously bright explosion. These explosions surpass the very brightest of stars, and can even outshine entire galaxies. To witness one, though, is a rare thing. Supernovae occur in our own galaxy about once every 50 years or so, but the large amount of gas and dust in the Milky Way prevent most from being seen as they occur, with the last one being seen in the year 1604. And this one was witnessed by none other than Johannes Kepler, who was also responsible for conceiving of the laws of planetary motion. The supernova, now known as SN 1604, or Kepler's supernova, was visible even during the day at a distance of 20,000 light years. Kepler's supernova is a special type of supernova known as a Type 1a. These occur in a star system where one of the stars is a small white dwarf, which absorbs stellar material from a neighboring star. As the mass accumulates in the white dwarf, it reaches a point known as the Chandreskar mass, where at 1.44 times the mass of the Sun, it can no longer support itself and collapses, fusing most of its carbon and oxygen in a matter of seconds, as it is ripped apart in an enormous explosion with the luminosity of about 6 billion suns. As bright as Type 1a supernovae are, there are even more luminous stellar events which occur. And while the pace of supernova creation is extremely slow in our galaxy, we can look to the many other galaxies in our universe for more examples. So many others, in fact, that astronomers have now automated the process by having machines do the observations. 
With a network of 24 telescopes around the world, the All Sky Automated Survey for Supernovae, or ASASSN for short, surveys the entire sky night after night, looking for any changes in brightness, and with great success so far. In 2019, the survey has so far discovered more than 1,000 supernova-like events. One event in particular that stands out from the survey is ASASSN-15LH. While the name may sound dull, this stellar event is anything but. With a luminosity of 560 billion suns, this event was twice as bright as any other supernova ever discovered. And while its exact mechanics are still being debated by scientists, it may be a rare type of supernova involving a special type of magnetic neutron star known as a magnetar, or it may even be something entirely different, possibly a flash from the extreme tidal effects of a spinning supermassive black hole tearing a star apart. So, is anything brighter than an exploding star? Well, strangely, it's really black holes which power the most luminous objects in the entire universe. This may be surprising as black holes have gravity strong enough to bend and trap light itself. But light is only doomed to this fate in the very nearby region of a black hole known as the event horizon. Outside the event horizon is the accretion disk, where the black hole's gravitational power accelerates material and creates truly enormous amounts of light and energy through friction, converting 10 to 20% of the accelerated mass into energy. As black holes get bigger and bigger by absorbing more and more material, their gravitational force and range get larger and larger until they reach the supermassive size. Supermassive black holes, which are believed to be at the center of most galaxies, can have a mass billions of times greater than our sun, and therefore their gravitational pull is correspondingly more powerful. When close enough, they can even devour entire stars, ripping them apart and accelerating their material into the swirling maelstrom of their accretion disk. But as bright as these supermassive black holes can be in normal galaxies, to be truly among the brightest objects in the universe, they need enormous quantities of matter to feed their accretion disk. This is where we get to the very brightest type of celestial objects, quasars. Originally called quasi-stellar objects, as they were mysterious star-like points of light, scientists now have identified them as incredibly distant galactic nuclei from the early universe. Much like our own galaxy, they have a supermassive black hole, but what sets them apart in brightness is how much more material they have available for fuel compared to a mature galaxy like the Milky Way. These young galaxies from the very early universe have an abundance of material close enough to the black hole to create an incredibly luminous accretion disk, sometimes powerful enough to send off jets of material near the speed of light out from the axis of the galaxy. The brightest of these discovered so far has the evocative name J0439 plus 1634. This quasar shines with the light of about 600 trillion suns, yet is so far away at 12.8 billion light years that only through a fascinating quirk of gravity is it visible at all. Between us here on Earth and the quasar is a dim galaxy which focuses the light much like a telescopic lens, bending its faint light back towards us. And so now we end our journey with ancient light, covering such an immense distance that were it not for this gravitational lensing, the very brightest known object in the universe would instead be completely invisible.